Hello from David Herman, alias Daz the Artist at 2.59, about to turn to 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Olympia, Washington on June 19th, 2018, and a beautiful sunny day. So, I'm back with my uh, space warrior that shouldn't have appeared on Earth. May have given pause or cause for the evolution of the Kachina. So here is my multi-dimensional entity. I'm, uh, you know, so many hours into this piece. Just a few. And I'm starting to develop my spaceman with a warrior uh, plasma kind of spear. And this is his helmet. This is his shoulder dress and other garments and spacesuit stuff. Of course, no matter who enters whose planetary space, whether it's us going to another planet or entities coming to our planet, civilizations or whatever you want to call those people that aren't from the Earth or from us going to another planet, we would be the alien. We need a spacesuit. Because everyone has its own unique atmosphere, its own unique gravitational field, and its own unique viruses, spores, bacteria, fungus, and uh, stuff like that. So, and I can tell you that's true because I work in the tattoo business, and like everyone in anything related towards medical, you study bloodborne pathogens. <laughs> so... You definitely don't want to get cut. You don't want to definitely ingest something. You don't want to make contact with somebody from another world because it's going to be a bad thing for you. That's why if any thing at all, they would take you aboard a craft, douse you with some kind of solution, and be walking around in suits before they could even touch you. So... Uh, any contact with the human race has probably been done through a biological android entity. And it appears that many things found on the Earth in spaceships, if any of it's true, because I don't know, I haven't been there personally. The entities themselves, while having slits for mouth or funny little teeth and look like a fish mouth, usually don't have any genitals, and don't have any uh, evacuation. They just have like a mouth maybe to make a sound or to ingest oil or chemicals or something like that into the biological multidimensional entity. So that's what we have here is a appearance of a space warrior in our time space. Or to be correct, they call it space time because you go alphabetical. S before T. <laughs> All right, enough of the silliness. Let's uh, let's get down and do some artwork. So I have my tools on another screen. I'm working on my 17-inch laptop. It's an Asus, and I draw using the Intuos Wacom's Intuos Pro Medium 4. So that's a good entry tool for anybody you could go with a smaller tablet you know but you only use a certain space on that tablet which I gotta say is like four inches square the rest of the tablets just like useless and you have the buttons on the side so you need it for that okay meanwhile let's go down some artwork so I'm gonna enlarge my drawing now that you've seen the whole of it And you can find me on Space Station, I mean on, on Art Station, as David Isaac Herman. D A V I D I S A A C H E R M A N. There's only one of me on there, and you can see uh, probably 500 illustrations as I've been teaching myself to become a digital artist over the last five years. What am I going to work on? So I'm kind of thinking up in this area right here. So these things are things of another dimension. Things coming into our time, our space time from the fabric of space time. Some out of view, some reflections, 
some dark energy stuff and some conduits of an energy source we would be unfamiliar with. Okay, so this is his forearm, and the hand is concealed up here as the weapon gives off energy, and that was just a rough sketch I did in Metabang, and now we're working in Photoshop with the JPEG file. So let's develop some of this up. Even though I like it is multiverse looking with negative spaces and positive spaces and uh, sacred geometry and stuff like that, we're going to enhance this forearm. And we're going to move that over just a little bit more. Once I get it at the right, say about there, and then take the hand in Photoshop and put it right about there. Okay. I'm going to go to Airbrush. Brush. And right now I'm at the uh, opacity of 55, which I'm going to go a little higher so I can be darker if I want. And the flow of no a third of the uh yeah a third would be less about a third of that not quite a third it's a little more than a third yeah and then I'll go over to my other screen and select black or I can work with this so a lot of times instead of using my swatches I'll just pull a color off my illustration with the eyedropper just do that. And there's the swatch and then I go back to brush and I do this in every program but I like working in Photoshop right now for what I'm going to do so in here we're going to work these cavities first so I'm going to be on a layer and now I'm going to fill in some black gently using my tablet it's a little dark, so we're going to cut the flow. And I don't know why it brings this up. It just does that. Uh, sometimes when I press on this tablet, it, it or maybe touches on here. Touch on, let's see if that stops it. Maybe if it touches off, it does that. Yeah, it seems to be okay with the touch off. So I'm developing some cavities. I guess I do want my touch off. And in my art, this is part of my negative space space. So I don't need this hard border, but it's reminiscent of something appearing and disappearing, or appearing and not being solid in the sense of us being solid, yet it is formed as a shape. But its roots are somewhere else other than in the space-time we live in even though it manifests a vision of itself before our eyes here. Does that make sense to you? I hope so. So yeah. Let's get him up into there. And then the hand. Uh, I'm going to make you know, very strange. <laughs> so let's start uh, with some finger type shapes. Uh, grabbing, I'm, I'm going to change this. So as I do this, I kind of figure out what I want as I roll. 
scale wise size wise and everything like that Now there must be something that grabs the thing, right? So it doesn't have to be humanoid looking. And, uh, yeah, but reference for us, our time space, something not to blow our mind completely, has some kind of appendage. It's hidden in here. And uh, I'm shaping that. One, two, three. And now I'm going to um, hmm. see that's the weapon itself would be there. And uh, the shape of it tapers long this way wide here you'd see part of it inside the palm again I'm uh, this is how I gesture sketch things into existence um, yeah so this is just what I do you know what I mean I'll leave that end like that for now uh, and then you see all this stuff happening here and this is where now I will elicit uh, real shapes from this. I'm just thinking of tiling the joints and uh, insectoid type appendages because I don't I really think the the human race <laughs> uh, I gotta believe is the only race that looks like it for a lot of reasons. It was completely a construct of another civilization. Perhaps aesthetically pleasing to them. Um, and these are my thoughts. Not based on any scientific evidence whatsoever, but strictly hypothetical if I was another civilization and I found a planet that was beautiful like earth and earth uh, was in the sweet spot of the Sun how it got there nobody knows its circulation say they either pushed earth into position or it was there when discovered but I kind of believe the whole solar system and everything is a construct that began with Jupiter. I'm not going to get into all that right now. And then you go to Earth and you want to inhabit Earth, okay? But you're already an existing life form. In other words, if you were a uh, cyanide based life form and you wanted to make a different type of planet and you wanted to have future generations inhabit that. you may completely start fresh based on what happened to your planet and its evolution and why you think there's an improved way to go about this. So you create the planet, you create the people, you create everything on the civilization. Sometimes I'm concentrating and I'm not talking, just like when I tattoo people. I'll be jamming away with the mouth sometimes so they're not feeling their pain and just talking about obtuse topics. And then I'm back uh, focusing on the art where it's detailed so I don't make an error. Okay, so that's how I talk to. So now this is the beginning of uh, uh, Tarsus and articulated joints on this alien entity in Photoshop. Okay. 
now. And this may end up being hidden again with energy, but first I gotta create the thing I'm gonna hide. So, all right, back to black. So I'm just gonna use the paint, the eyedropper, and jump in and out of my painting for the color. Little trick. That's why you don't need a palette. Unless you're doing a specific, you know, eight color face or something like that. I don't know. It looks fancy when you make a palette, but it's not necessary. Let's see. Of course, I use a thousand colors. I, everything I do is different in every phase. Because this has to do with my philosophy of the multiverse. Okay, back to making a planet. So you make a planet. Then you want to create uh, an entity and to be true to your origins as the creator of time, space, planet situation, you want your seed to go into the future. And perhaps you're an immortal race, but you want to be able to experience what we call sensuality or love or pain or agony or some type of s stimulation because you are have been around forever that in the course of time and you becoming near immortal uh, that stuff changes because you can't die and so you're a different entity but now you want to experience all this so you make earth and then over time earth under your guidance, produces life as you seed it. And once uh, you get to the evolution of the monkey, then you take the monkey and genetically mutate its seed with the seed of your alien race to make the hybrid to walk the earth. Because there's a lot of work to get done, buildings to be built to house you and all these weird structures we see on the earth the first entities are your slaves because you may not be all about compassion you may have an agenda and that's it in your first appearance before your own life form you may feel godlike and want to show your sadistic powers because the higher intelligent a life form is the more sadistic they are the higher the IQ the less the empathy it is exhibited that way among humans and therefore its origin is rooted somewhere else. That is my theory. Because it works the opposite you think it would. You would think the higher your intelligence, the greater your empathy. But they are mutually exclusive functions. Empathy and intelligence are not the same. And that is exhibited on a daily basis on the planet Earth, that's for sure. So, my entity is developing here, and it's in a spacesuit. A spacesuit of the multiverse. So, by that, what I mean is, that there are several ways to travel in time, in space-time. Uh, if you're an artist, you have <laughs> these concepts anyways. I, I, I'm not sure what the physicists think, but you know what? I've been on the Earth a long time. I'm going into my... Uh, I don't want to say how old I am. Well, I already have another video, so I will be 68 in three days, which I'm coming up to my seventh decade I've seen a lot happen on the planet Earth just like the, my parents before me uh, and evolution is and 
development of Earth has only been scaled up in my lifetime. Uh, after the last extinction. I mean, prior to that, there may have been civilizations greater than us, and it appears that they're greater than us in a different way in that they used uh, energy out of the atmosphere, a free energy source. But that was lost due to their own wars or cataclysms, uh, natural disasters, solar flares, hotspots, earthquakes, pole reversals, the best laid plans of mice, men, and aliens do not always work out. Heed me on that. So you've created a life form and you have to become a hybrid. Which means the slow experiment that you've never done anywhere else of creating lungs, voice box, Things that may be totally foreign to yourself as an entity, which may be a telepathic insectoid race, and now you're creating a bipedal five-limbed, I forget what they call it, when you have a head, two arms, two legs, pedantic or something, something with a five, uh, life form. And now, uh, this is how I kind of flesh this out. So thinking and talking is always the toughest part of these videos. Uh, not just thinking and talking, but thinking and talking and drawing. Let me clarify that. Because I'm trying to invent a spacesuit that holds a different shaped finger thumb kind of apparatus entity and still and still represent perhaps something that uh, we can distinguish And at the moment, I just had a flashback to my life in Michigan, which I'm going to be going back to visit pretty soon. Haven't been there in 14 years, been in the Northwest the last 14 years. Uh, and I was just, for some reason, recalling a store where I used to get my lottery tickets. And uh, remembering what a hostile environment that was. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going back. I'm going back because I have to meet some people to discuss some business about possibly working on my science fiction novel with me. I've, I've written the book. I need to go speak to a guy who's volunteered to be my editor. And he's the only person on the earth to have read the book cover to cover. And it's going to be a short visit of uh, a week or so. And then I will try and talk to him and cram in visiting lots of people if the situation permits. Their time frame, it's a work week and all that, you know. I can't plan things out to the minute. Because that only sets up disappointment. So I just told people I'll be there in such and such a time frame. If we intersect, we intersect. And uh, one way of doing that may be to show up somewhere and say, I'm here at this restaurant or this bar. It's close to everybody. Come hang out or something like that. I'm not the best. Tra I love traveling. I have a great time when I get to my destination. Planning getting there. <laughs> Planning, getting back, and all that stuff is just very nerve-wracking to me. I don't know why, because when I was a child, my parents uh, didn't really plan our trips too well. They were traumatic as hell, and they left me with the post-traumatic syndrome for travel. Uh, anybody whose parents are chaotic will understand what I mean. It's just like, are we going? Are we, le are we leaving? What day is it? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Everything keeping you in the dark. 
So now that I'm a grown man, some of that stuff just stays with you from when you're a kid. I don't know why. You see how this is evolving, though? We're starting to pull this out of nowhere. Because I've had a lifetime experience as an artist and have spent the last five years teaching myself to digitally paint. Uh, what I've tried to do is probably an overwhelming start, but now it's just beginning to uh, gel, start to make sense to me and all that. So my first I was in the printing profession. That means I worked on, served an apprenticeship and worked on printing presses, cameras, and light tables producing film and stripping it together to make books and to make printed material, points of purchase, point of sale, um, lug-ons that people put giveaways into on stand-up tent cards and things like that and all that stuff. From printing, I worked my way up the food chain uh, just by necessity because I had a family to support and ended up becoming like a working supervisor which means you work your ass off as a supervisor and you're accountable to everybody else's work and what they can't fix you have to go over there and be a hands-on guy and fix it. From that led me to uh, continue my fine art in the background. It took me 20 years to get an associate's degree which I got back in like 92 and uh, then uh, in Detroit, since it was related to the automotive industry, all automotive industry, all machine shops, all uh, super cool photographic studios, all television, anything related to high-end technology and industrialization, and great place. But that has a cycle that ran about every five years of prosperity to drought and very expensive place to live at the peak of each five cycle, highest interest rate in banks. And then the crush always comes and you're in line at the unemployment line. So 20 years ago, when the whole industry went sideways really bad and the car industry was about to go bust and all that, uh, I decided as a survival to go into tattooing based on a suggestion from my, my two sons. I didn't want to be a tattoo artist. <laughs> I had no desire to be a tattoo artist. I thought of it as thug life, even though I was a long-haired ponytail hippie salesman, self-employed, as an advertising executive, creative, and uh, designer and stuff, I decided that perhaps I should try a new life, Ko Yanisquatsi. So tattooing became my thing for the last 20 years. I've had a shop just run by me. And other than in Detroit, where I had a guy who worked at some contract labor once in a while, it's always been me by myself. And at one time in Redmond, Washington, I had an apprentice for a couple years. And still in touch with my apprentice to help guide him through life as far as a tattoo artist goes. Because he's a very smart engineer and makes a full-time living in Cali as an engineer. Now, tattooing... Uh, it's kind of run its gambit with me, you know. Uh, I became what I consider a master tattoo artist. I can do anything in tattooing, depending on the client's money and uh, how much they, you know, how much they want to spend, how big a piece they want, where it's located, and if it's going to continue or just be a one-off and all that stuff. So, while tattooing is interesting. I decided to finally learn digital art due to uh, a few setbacks five years ago, a little over five years ago. 
and I've been working on it for five years. Now you're seeing the result of that is my latest thing is to continue to learn all the softwares I can learn in 2D. Right now I don't own any 3D stuff like um, Keystroke or that kind of stuff. Uh, whatever it's called. Or Maya or any of that. I never went into 3D. But I'm mastering the best I can my 2D. And because my the way I paint, I have my own, as you may have guessed, uh, opinion about some things I want to manifest as art. And in order to do that, I've created a mental language that I visually represent in structure. And you're watching me freestyle here. So now I've kind of got the start of this really cool hand of my entity in a spacesuit of different design origin than one would normally see or expect to see made of material that one would not expect to see. Let me get the, the paint swatch from off this other screen. I want to introduce a color. Right there. Let me think about this. This is coming around. This is coming around here. This goes over this, 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 that. It could all be like that. It wouldn't. And the fact that it's his arms go in this direction, the hand comes back this direction, tells you that there's a swivel behind this. That you know, in here, this is clamped over against this surface, which is an R plane. But this is coming from the back to the front. This is a weird thumb and some encasements for three fingers. Now, let's go to a hard line. So I'm going to go off screen, and I'm going to grab a brush preset. Under the airbrush, I'm grabbing the, uh, what looks like a crow quill pen, see? It's showing up in the imagery there. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to see if we can introduce like a hard line in here. And a slight line up here. Okay, so I want a different color, of course. So that's going to be uh, here. Dense black. Back to brush. And let's see if we can put some in a socket right there. It's a hard edger, so there we go. A little more defined edges. is a pen tool. It's not an airbrush, so it doesn't have the soft edge. It's a very tiny diameter black edge. See? 
right there. And all these tools are kind of tricky to learn with, but look how amazing digital art is. I mean, I did not have to have all these tools sitting around on my table invested in a $500 worth of tools, at least. Different pens, different inks, different brushes, different sponges, different palette knives, different, even though I have all that crap <laughs> still laying around in my studio. But, uh... I'm learning how to do it all digitally. So it's time for a save, because we don't want to lose this. So we're going to save as, uh, this is be number 8 on the PSD, and then 8 on a JPEG. Let me, uh, hey, all right, it doesn't like to do it with the pen. i got to go to the mouse usually. don't know why that is. With, there's a conflict sometimes with the tablet and the pen. So let's save that, Roger, and let's save as JPEG, right there. That's safe. Now we can put this uh, view fit on screen. You can see I've started to create this. It took 36 minutes. And, of course, it came out of nowhere. And now, even though it looks like it's in front of this, we will bring this uh, I like, these three are making a wrap. So this one came first, this one came second, this put itself over those. It's passing between here and these. Now, it looks weird, and I love the articulation of this. So what I might do, I'm almost thinking I want to change it. Yeah, that's cool. I'm going to think about this for a minute, but it's definitely looking cool. And that is uh, a wrap, because I'm going to... Uh, Save this without being too big to make as a video. Thanks for watching.